Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR. So listen, today we're gonna to talk about something really amazing and I think that you all are gonna enjoy. What I'm gonna talk about today is every step from beginning to end on how to make your own resume. You don't need anybody anymore. You know, the old saying says, you know, if I just take the horse to the water, I can't make it drink, I'm taking you to the water. You're gonna drink, you're gonna take care of yourself. Like the Bible says, teach a man how to fish. He's good for a lifetime. I'm teaching you how to fish. So all y'all got to do is sit back and watch because I'm going to literally do it here on the computer. As a computer, you need Microsoft Word. If this is you, this video is for you, you know somebody is for, send it to them, watch it, pull out your computer, get prepared, make your resume as we go through this video. Y'all are going to know all of my videos that I did in February because I'm wearing my Black Girl Magic shirts the whole February. So I am unapologetically dope with my afro, my big hoops, got my hoops on. So anyhow, I am just so excited because I don't think that we should celebrate, you know, Black History Month just in the month of February. So I try to just go overboard and in the month of February, I try my hardest even in my, you know, corporate establishment to be blackity black. Like, come on, we went through a lot. So why not celebrate it? And I'm so proud of my chocolate skin, so proud of my heritage, so proud of just the culture that we're in, that you're gonna constantly see me with these shirts on. We are pushing for jobs, housing, desegregated schools. This is an urgent request. Please join, go to Washington. On August 28th, 1963, 200,000 Americans came to Washington to demand complete freedom for everyone. And so, one thing that we're going to do is instead of going over how to do a resume using a Microsoft Word document from scratch, that's going to be part two. This video is going to be part one. And this video is going to talk about, or I'm going to show you step by step, how to make a resume using templates that's already in Microsoft Word. If you've seen my other video, and I'm going to make sure to just tag it here so you can click on it. I've given some some hints on how to like make the resume process a little bit easier for you. But here I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. The great thing that I love about this software, about Microsoft Word is that this is a place to do, um, or it has templates on how to do a resume, but it has templates on how to do everything. In literally everything. If you wanna do a newsletter, it has templates for that. If you wanna do, um, so many different things. I mean, let's dive in and kind of look at a couple things. Okay, y'all ready? Got your cap computer? All right, you got your documents open? Let's get rolling. So I literally have a Word document open. Like, All right, here's the fun part. So we're in Word and this is gonna show us where we can look at a blank document or it's gonna show your most recent search documents or recently used documents. This is also where you're gonna type in if you're looking for a different type of template. So you'll see it's like your saved documents like on the screen, but you can just put in like where you wanna look for invoices, newsletters, resumes, whatever. Um, but for this video purposes, we're gonna do resumes and you're gonna just type that into the search area in this little white box, hit more templates, and they're gonna pop up. So you see all of the offers that Microsoft Word has for you. At the top, you can see that majority of them are like super colorful. They have different shapes on them. They have a whole lot of stuff, but you wanna avoid the ones that have your picture in it. Cause remember, like in my last video, check it out if you need to, your picture is giving away all of your EEO protection. But you can see the more you scroll down, the resumes get a little bit boring. So let's go back to the top where the resumes are a little bit more fun. But before we choose which one we're gonna use for this project or for this video, I wanna show you one to avoid. So avoid this template by all means. It's used all the time. If somebody uses a template, they use this one. And I wanna give you guys an example. It's like getting that dress, going to the party, you got an amazing dress from Fashion Nova and when you get in there, you're like, oh my God, five people got my dress. That's what this template is like. So you don't want resumes to come up that look like yours. You want yours to be unique. You want that yours to stand out. You want yours to be the one that they choose. But if you use this one, nine times out of 10, 10 other people in that applicant pool have used the very same one. So let's avoid this one. 
So instead of using that one, we're gonna use this one. This one's called the Minimalistic Resume. So it looks minimalistic, but it's great. It has a great format. Let's use this one instead. And if you want, you can use a resume assistant to the right if that pops up on your computer. I'm just gonna be your resume assistant. So you can see it's pretty much telling you everything to put in. It's a one pager. You don't wanna go over two pages. So we won't go over two pages here. That's gonna be our maximum, but we're gonna go ahead and start doing our edits. So I'll go ahead and take that out, put my name in place of it. And then when you're done, if you have credentials after your name, then you wanna put those credentials in after your name. My credentials tend to get pretty long. And so I'm going to adjust it, just do some edits because I feel like in, in every instance, you always wanna make sure that your name is what sticks out to them. So I'm gonna make it a little smaller, make sure that it all fits on one line. I'm going to go back through the whole thing. Maybe I want to bold it. Maybe I want to change the font. So that's what I'm going to do now. I already did some spacing. Let's bold. Let's put in some fonts here. Whatever font works for you. This is telling about who you are. So put in what you like, what works for you. You don't have to follow this exact same format. But you're going to make edits to it that works for you that makes your resume stand out because this is the first thing that they're gonna see, which is your name. As you can see, I've already changed it to human resources because that's my type of job that I'm looking for. That's my word that I want to stand out to come out in applicant tracking systems. I'm gonna put in my address, but I'm definitely not putting in more than the state and the city. I'm gonna put in my phone number. Obviously, I'm not putting in my real phone number here, but you will put in your real phone number there. And then I'm gonna put in my email address. Again, I'm not putting in my actual email address, but you definitely wanna do that. So fill that stuff in and make sure that it's positioned where you like it. Again, go back and look at my old video. You don't want somebody to go online and Google your address to see what neighborhood you're in. What type of house do you have? How many cars are in your garage? Like that's the stuff people do. It is not right. I, I, I guarantee you it ain't right. I hate it. I hate when people do it. Like they're like, oh, I already Googled them. Or, oh, I already looked them up. That is just wrong. <laughs> So let's move to the next thing. That'll be the objective. So we obviously want to move to that next. So it's telling you how to use it for best results. Select that, da, da, da. So objectives should start with two, right? What am I trying to do? Grow my career with an organization. the organization because you always want to look like hey I'm not out here just for self and to improve my professional skills this is very generic you probably want to do something more detailed but you get the idea so here for your college you're gonna start putting in all this stuff it tells you to put in GPA to be honest with y'all I don't really look at GPAs I mean in my opinion if you finish and you got a degree that works for me like, because a lot of people ain't going to school and getting a degree. So, sister child, you got a degree. What am I looking like? Well, how'd you get it? Hell, I don't even know what your grading, your GPA score, um, scale is. If it's not fitting, then doesn't hurt to just put some stuff in short. Now, don't use a bunch of acronyms because people don't know what acronyms are if you're not, like, applying for a place specific to that job. So try to at least put acronyms in the beginning, like spell them out, and then you can use them over and over at the bottom, okay? Hey, give me two seconds, because <laughs> Riley want to come in. <laughs> She's knocking on the door. Could you not interrupt, interrupt my video session? Come on, come on. All right, she just won't tell y'all hi. Sorry, that's my, that's my second baby. And she just wants to say hey to the camera. All right, wait, we got stuff, stuff we gotta get done. These folks ain't come to see you. Actually, you position, because sometimes I want to know if it's like full-time or not. And I just don't think that that's important to put full-time or part-time, because honestly, we should expect that all your positions are full-time. If it's part-time, sometimes that can diminish like the quality of your work. So somebody might not think you've had a ton of experience because you've only did a part-time. When in part-time, Maybe you were working 25 hours every week. Well, that's a significant amount of time. Somebody who's just looking at your resume and see part-time might think you're only working five or 10 hours per week. 
and that's not as significant. Sometimes you do a whole lot of work in part-time hours. I started my HR career in part-time and I, I grind. I don't diminish my career by or my resume by saying I only started part-time. I worked a year part-time and the other year I worked full-time. Nobody needs to know that, I don't care. They're just trying to get the position full, so. Keywords just aren't that big of a deal, but for the larger organizations, keywords is huge. So if you're applying to like, Amazon, Google, um, you know, Microsoft, those huge places, CBS, then you want to do keywords. Smaller places, doesn't matter as much. We're probably going to go through every applicant. company I worked for was ABC123 company. Now, people might say, okay, oh, we're all done. No, no, no. You still want to still go back in and fill in some duties. And you're going to put those now... To be honest with you, since this template is so simple, I'm not gonna do it on this one, but on part two, I'm definitely gonna go in duties and I'm gonna show you how to pull those duties from the job description, copy and paste. And we're gonna make that work. But this is a simple one. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. Keep this video short, because I want you guys just to get in here and see that this tool is available. This is where this template is telling you put all that info in one because it's expecting that you've worked in the same type of work over and over again. If you've worked in different places then or different type of duties or maybe you've improved your duties over time, then you want to list them by the job. But here we can put process all new hires, recruiting and talent acquisition, that type of thing, right? So that's pretty much what I did at all jobs. Communications. You don't have to see what the subtitles that are here. You want to put professional accomplishments, right? Um, created a new hire. A. I'm gonna go down here and for these key skills. Um, that's where I'll put talent acquisition. I freestyle my stuff, so I put in like some bullet points. Now here is a good example of the acronym thing I was telling you guys. So normally I put HISs, so human, but not here. I'm gonna put human resources, information systems. Here I'll put HISs. Cause again, if I wanna use it later, I can. Implements for process improvement. I.E. So I don't want to list, implemented this, implemented that, implemented this. These are kind of different. Uh, their database is just for process improvement. I noticed that there were some things going on, taking too long to get some things done. How can we make us a little bit faster and make sure that we're doing it right? So I implemented a COBRA database. I implemented a benefits database. I implemented an applicant tracking system. I probably don't remember all, so I'm putting et cetera, okay? If you guys watched my last video, here we go. You can watch it here. Got it clipped in. Then you know, I already said don't put references. You can actually just leave this thing available upon request because honestly, no one should be checking your references unless they verify with you. And you only want people to check your references if they're pursuing this position for you. If you're coming in for an interview, already did interviews or whatever the case may be, then guess what? You can check my references all day. But if you just check my references because it looks like somebody you know you're trying to see or you kind of think you might like me, but you're not sure, I don't want that. Because you don't want to make your references, the people that you use as references, tired. Like, you don't want to wear them out. There we go. All done with the whole resume. Look at that. It looks great. It goes over to the second page. Fix that. You don't want to send nobody something like that. Because when they go to print it out, it becomes a headache. So one way that I fix it is I go to layout. I go to margins. I go down to custom margins. Because I don't want the whole thing to get distorted. So I'm going to just make the top a little bit smaller. Make the bottom a little bit smaller. Everything should fit. Real simple resume. So if you're looking for a position where you're making more money than you did in the past, you probably want to use something a, more de a little more detailed. But just to get you started, use this. Throw it in Indeed, throw it in LinkedIn, so that they use these templates versus the ones that they have. You want to make sure you save it. 
and I'm gonna put the day's date. So when I go update it again, I know when I did this one. One big thing, I always suggest not to send a blank word document because you can have anybody, like anybody can alter your, your, your document. You don't know, it might be the admin assistant and she didn't realize that she took a whole bunch of stuff out, she didn't know how to put it back in, she can't find you in the database, now your whole resume is distorted. You just don't know. So I always say go here, hit save as, and you're gonna change it to a PDF. No one can alter your PDFs, okay? So you always wanna pull up the PDF because sometimes Putting it into that format will take your stuff out of like the format that it should be and so always go back and peek at it and make sure it looks the way you want it to look otherwise you need to alter it in word and then go back and save it again and you can just save it over the same document so there we go all done listen y'all want to see part two i know y'all do we already went through part one that was easy it didn't take us long at all but if you wanna see how to do it from scratch or you wanna see how to edit your existing one, who knows, I might just do a part three. So I want y'all to definitely comment below. If you feel like I should do a part three video and be like, hey, I already have a resume, can you show me how to edit it? Let me know and I'll do that as a part three. Otherwise, we're gonna start from scratch in Microsoft Word on video number two. So stick around for it. If you have any comments or suggestions, maybe you think that, oh, to me that was great, but I would like to have seen this or that, again, comment below. If y'all know somebody that need help with this thing, please forward them this video. Like seriously. And do me a huge favor. If you are returning, I want you to just go ahead and comment down below. My black is history. I mean, even if you're a white person, like black people always been around you. You know what I'm saying? So you know something about black people. You always around them. My black is history. Okay, cool. All right, what do y'all think I should put? All right, Black History. It doesn't matter. Just put something, because this is February. We represent not just Valentine's Day, but Black History Month. If this is your first time coming to this video, I ask you to please subscribe. Please forward this along to anyone else. You know, guys, I just appreciate you guys coming. So just show me just a tad bit of love back by just commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing. That kind of stuff makes me happy. See you guys on the next video.